Music is coming full circle. The way people have consumed music over the last decade has kept changing. In the 1920s, a rubber scientist discovered a way to record sounds on a polyvinyl chloride or PVC vinyl record. Recorded music was first sold as individual songs on 78 RPM. Then from 1948, as vinyl LP albums sprayed at 33 and 1 third RPM. The lesser the RPM, the better the quality. In the 1980s, cassette tapes flooded the market, making it possible to copy songs from one tape to another. Sony's development of the Walkman, the world's first personal music system, made it into an international electronics giant. In the 1990s, albums began to be sold in CD-ROMs, a compact disc read-only memory that produced better sound quality than tapes, for which you needed special CD players. Back in the 90s, storage was expensive and the maximum hard disk space a 486 computer could support was half to 1.5 GB. Today your phone can have 256 GB. In the 1990s, the Fraunhofer Institute for Integrated Circuits in Germany invented the MP3 format. It reduces the size of the song to about one twelfth of the original. Its great advantage was that it could be copied and played on a computer. Around the same time, recordable compact discs or CDRs came into being. Now one could have over 100 songs on a slim CD. For the next few years, CDs and MP3s expanded the whole market and music sales soared. Music companies like Warner, EMI, Polygram earned record profits until the introduction of the first MP3 player in 1997. Copying became so easy then that piracy became the norm with apps like LimeWire and Napster. These free P2P file sharing programs led to unlimited piracy with music labels filing lawsuit after lawsuit until they finally managed to shut them down. Steve Jobs reinvented the online music business with an obvious solution. We should allow people to download singles for a dollar. Musician after musician joined Apple's digital music store. And when Apple introduced the shuffle, it became an instant hit, especially among runners. Last year, MP3s made way for a new format, AAC suited for mobile phones, though the FLAC format is better for lossless quality. With the iPhone now able to do all things, Apple announced the withdrawal of its one brick devices. Google stopped selling the iPod Nano and Shuffle. With data costs so cheap, streaming is the way forward. It's all on the cloud, no need to download music to a device. However, in a strange turn of events, the Vinyl Record is making a surprising comeback. Here lies the Vinyl Record, dead and buried since the 80s. Though DJ was one area where it had always remained popular. Nothing can beat the sound quality of a Vinyl. In Britain, sales from Vinyls in 2016 were more than from streaming platforms, with worldwide sales topping $1 billion. Japan's sole record maker, Toyo Kasai, cannot keep up with demand. Oh, sorry, all so now, come next week. Sony, which last manufactured Vinyls 30 years back in 1989, plans to get back, but cannot find the technical people required. The way we listen to music has evolved over the years, and now even earphones are wireless. How do you think you'll be listening to music 10 years from now? A holographic live concert in your own house? A chip in your head that automatically understands when you want music? Scientists at the Graz University of Technology in Austria have just made a brain-computer interface chip that automatically understands and composes the tune playing in your head. Comment and tell us what you think the future of music could be. Bizbo's Limerick CD, MP3, vinyl or tape Nowadays you can listen to anything any place AAC flat will come and go Digital streaming or a live show Who cares so long as I dance with my date If you like this video, share it with your friends And become Bizbo's friend by subscribing for free to Bizbo's YouTube channel